What I'm going to be doing today is an experiment to see if white cement or Portland cement works in resin and if so what sort of effect it gives or whether it just goes bleh. Now white cement is very different to plaster of Paris. I've mentioned that before in quite a lot of my videos. It's quite a hard cement and it cures a little bit differently. Now I'm going to do different vases because I love the way that these vases come out. And I will link everything that I'm using today in the description below, so don't worry. And I'm also going to, in one of them, I'm going to put some holographic glitter in one of the vases. I'm going to use some mica powder and see how that comes out in the resin and the Portland cement. I'm hoping it works, but who knows? You know, with my experiments. I've put equal amounts of the J-Diction resin into my mixing pots now, and I'm getting ready to put in the white cement. Now, I'm going to try and do equal amounts, but I am doing it by eye here. So if you wanted to ensure that you got exact amounts in each time, then my suggestion would be just to weigh your powder so you know how much to put in and then that way you'll get a very similar result every single time. So topping this up now to make sure that I've got a kind of similar amount in and giving it a mix. Now this does go quite clumpy to start with, but it does mix in, in in a few seconds quite well. Now I'm mixing this a bit faster than I probably should have done because it does contain an awful lot of air bubbles. Can you hear my dog in the background? She's scrapping at the carpet for some reason. Sorry about that. And you will see the effect of the air bubbles that come out a little bit later, but you could see them there popping. And it also means that you will need to top up quite a few times once you've put this in your mould, because once the air bubbles disperse, then it leaves the space where they were. So pouring this in, not too slowly, but slowish to allow for a good adhesion to all the sides and hopefully no trapped air bubbles. Although we will do some squidgy widgy on it because that's quite important. So just finally topping this up, I will now give it some squidgy widgy and also drop it a couple of times from, there we go, to try and tap out any bubbles. But can you see the bubbles already starting to appear both on the surface here and where I've just lost those bubbles, I've already had to top that up. So put that to one side, we'll come back to that in a minute. Now what I'm going to do is fill up that little skull mould as well because I want to see what it comes out like on a little mould and I'm just using a bit of glitter but check out here this is a good shot of me with my full face mask on and respirators and I know I say this quite often in videos but it's really important to take care of your health. Resin might be non-toxic so it's not going to poison you but it can cause skin problems. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you for the coffees. Your names for, are coming up now for who people got me coffees last month. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed my new little thank you. So the hour has been retired for a little while and we're back to a puppy. So I've scraped off the excess and what I'm going to do is leave that to cure up. Again, going back over these, can you see how many bubbles have come up? Now the bubbles don't seem half as bad once I start putting other stuff on. It's in. It's just the ones where I haven't used anything that the bubbles seem to be the worst. So now my favourite thing, or second favourite thing, because glitter is my favourite thing, bit of mica powder here. Now I'm going to try and mix this mica powder in here, but without it being fully mixed. A bit like you would with a marble cake. Mmm, cake. Love cake. Mmm, yum, yum. And that way, I'm hoping to get more of a two-tone effect. Also, check out my other crafting channel. The link for that is in the description below. I do lots of different crafts. No resin on there, but lots of different crafts that you might enjoy. So pouring this in, and I poured this one in a little bit faster, but as you can see, there's not as many bubbles, but it is a beautiful colour. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up a bit. And you can see where it isn't fully mixed coming up now. And hopefully that should give us a nice marbled effect, but it probably will blend in. I'm not 100% sure yet until the final demolding. So pop in some bubbles and then I will top this one up again. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to my awesome members whose names are coming up now. We've got a great community going on. It's really active on the Facebook group for members as well as all the additional members videos and support. 
So giving this a mix in, this glitter, and this is the holographic black glitter. And again, I'm trying to do this without mixing it in fully to allow for a little bit of a marbling effect. And we'll see what that one comes out. So pouring this in, as you can see, it's not fully mixed. Now glitter is heavier than mica powder, so hopefully this isn't going to blend in too much, but also hopefully it's not just all going to sink to the bottom. My dog is so noisy today, bless her. So again, top that up, pop the bubbles on there, and then I will go over all the rest again and pop the bubbles on those. And what I did find is I had to go over them several times over about a 10 minute period to get rid of all the bubbles. And when they displaced, as you can see here with the purple mica powder one, it did leave quite a large gap. So it is a good idea to leave some to one side to be able to top up as and when you need to, if you're gonna use this. And I love this technique. I love how this come out. So, and you'll see that at the end. For some reason, I didn't get hit record and hadn't noticed when I demolded these. <laughs> and I went on rabbit in about what they've come out like and none of it has come out. So this is the one where I didn't use any colouring. It was just the Portland cement or white cement that I put in there. Now, I think that has come out quite pretty, but it does remind me of the sort of thing that my grandmother would have had on her dressing table about 80, 90 years ago. It is nice and it's come out clear. It does come out quite bubbly, so you need to be careful of that. And I think that's because the powder contains a lot of air, but it has mixed in really well and looks nice. So this is the mica powder one. I love the way that that has come out. I and as you know, I love mica powder anyway. And this is the glitter one. Then this was the holographic black glitter and it is really sparkly, certainly on the base where it, the glitter has settled, but it helped the glitter to remain through it and it's given it this two-tone effect. Now, I personally love that. That is my favorite one. I'm not sure how you would get that effect without using something like Portland cement in there with it. And because it's a clear, because uh, it's a kind of pale color, you can still see the lovely, gorgeous black holographic glitter in there. And it is really, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, just how sparkly that is. I would definitely use that technique again to make these, you have to excuse my burn, I would definitely use these technique again to make some of these with different glitters as well. And I think they would sell exceptionally well and cost virtually nothing to make. These are great molds. I will link everything I've used in the description below so you can get hold of it, including the molds. Please remember to boot the like button. It does help my videos to get out there. And if you'd like to help support my channel and allow me to keep making videos and things, then you can either become a member or if you'd like, you can buy me a coffee and that's really appreciated. The links for both are in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.